In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts, studies, and data sets to help us answer the question, are stocks on the verge of a major correction? These are the topics we'll be covering. This week featured two hotter than expected inflation reports in the form of PPI and CPI. Offside of your screen is a ratio of ETFs, TBT divided by XLK. TBT is short TLT, long-term treasury bonds. XLK is a technology sector for the S&P 500 index. We've got moving averages on our chart 20 day all the way out to the 250. If we come down to the lower left-hand corner of your screen, the market was still in risk on mode in Q4 of 2021. And that started to change rather rapidly early in 2022. If you're concerned about inflation, you probably don't want to own long-term bonds. Hence, shorting TLT was attractive on a relative basis. And the market was concerned about discounted cash flows with tech stocks and future earnings. Higher interest rates makes them less attractive. It's really true for all stocks. This is the beginning of 2022 here. This is where the bottoming process really kicks in. The S&P 500 bottoms in late October. The NASDAQ doesn't bottom until late December. And you can see the ratio reverses course as the market becomes less and less concerned about inflation, interest rates, and Fed policy. So stocks are rallying over here. Stocks are in a bear market here. Stocks are rallying over here. And markets that are driven by inflation, interest rates, and Fed policy tend to be volatile. Very similar concerns here in the summer of 2023, but you can see the magnitude of this move here pales in comparison to the magnitude of this move here. This is the window here where the S&P 500 is correcting between early August and late October, and sentiment shifts rather rapidly regarding all three of these topics. This shift here, very, very similar to this shift here in Q4 of 2022. Thus, the logical question to ask and answer here, what do we look like today? Do we have a turn like this in Q1 of 2022 that shows a significant shift in expectations regarding this topic, this topic, and this topic? Or do we still look relatively tame? The answer over here on the right side of your screen is somewhat of a mixed bag, but it leans toward relatively tame. We don't have a big spike like we had in Q1 of 2022 here, nor do we have a big spike like we had last summer when the stock market was correcting. We do have some indecisiveness and consolidation. So if this look over here on the right side of your screen starts to take on this look, 20 day above the 75 day in green, 20 day above the 50 day in red, this kind of transition look in here, concerns about a pullback would increase. This look in here, very, very similar to this turn in here. Look at price, or the ratio in this case, and the moving averages. Right now, blue, the 20-day moving average, the fastest moving average is on the bottom. And we don't have a turning up look here in the 75-day, turning up look in the 75-day. Having said all that, things can change rather quickly. This is after both of the major inflation reports this week. This is late in the session on Thursday the 14th. CPI was released on Tuesday. PPI was released on Thursday morning. This is Thursday afternoon. Keep it in mind, this chart shows the 20 day all the way out to the 250 day in black. We take more of a zoomed in or magnified view. So in this case, we're using the eight day moving average in blue all the way out to the 50 day moving average. It's going to be a little bit more sensitive so if our present day chart, the lower right hand corner of your screen, starts to take on this look here, concerns would increase. Unlike the previous chart, this chart is looking a little bit more concerned. This is XLE energy, think inflation friendly energy, relative to XLK. We should also keep in mind these are the shorter term moving averages, much more sensitive and not particularly apropos to our long-term time frame, with the exception of it helps us understand where we are on multiple time frames. This is telling us on a shorter term time frame, the odds of a correction have probably been increasing over the past several weeks. And this look here is somewhat similar 
to this look over here where the S&P 500 peaked last summer and then had a multiple month correction. The look over on the right hand side of your screen simply tells us to pay closer attention. It doesn't mean a correction has started. It just means the odds of some type of stock market pullback, 2%, 4%, 6%, 10%, are probably a little bit higher today than they were a week ago. And notice this ratio here bottoms starts to rise a little bit before the stock market peaks, let's say a week or 10 days earlier. And it also starts to fall before the S&P 500 finds a bottom down here. Energy versus tech telling us to pay closer attention. NASDAQ market breath on Thursday, this too, is after both of the major inflation reports. Weak, also telling us to pay closer attention. We also want to understand how do we determine whether it looks more like a normal correction or something significantly more serious like 2022. It's the same ratio XLE relative to XLK. Now we're looking at anchored volume weighted average price charts. This is a dramatic shift here in the ratio and we have a bear market. Last summer, a similar move during the stock market correction in 2023 this looks a lot more like a counter trend rally within the context of this downtrend. When we go into the bear market, the ratio clears these anchored volume weighted average price lines tied to this high, this high, and this low. These are similar lines here. So last summer, the correction ended near a logical level. If this ratio comes up into here and fills this area here, that would still look like a correction. If it starts to look more like this and gets out into this region here, that would be a bit more concerning relative to the market's concerns about all three of these topics, inflation, interest rates, and Fed policy. How about energy in isolation? Clients that have been with us for some time have a very small position in XLE. And we look at XLE in isolation this is the reason why we haven't taken that to zero. It's really just been consolidating and moving sideways for quite some time. This is 2022 back here. So a breakout here would also give us some insight into inflation expectations. It hasn't happened yet. All the charts for the most part that we cover in this segment are going to be very similar to the concepts that we covered on the first chart in this segment. This is what we look like today. This is the look here that would tell us correction odds are most likely increasing. S&P 500 peaks here in late July, early August of 2023. And soon thereafter, this ratio of diversified bonds, AGG, relative to tech XLK, is above the moving average cluster. Right now, price is on the bottom of the cluster. So if we get a move like this relatively quickly to the other side, we would learn something. As you can see here, a move in isolation, a move in isolation, a move in isolation. It's the move, and then the longer the move stays there, the more relevant it becomes. And you can see during the correction here, the ratio looks different relative to this period here that's risk on in the S&P. A little bit different perspective. Again, these are shorter term charts that help us assess shorter term odds. This is the S&P 500 SPY relative to one to three year or relatively conservative treasury bonds, SHY, SPY relative to SHY. S&P 500 peaks here in late July, early August of 2023. And this is the correction look here that we would want to avoid in the present day. If we look at the chart up here, upper right hand corner of your screen, the same moving averages, same ratio, we don't have anything yet in hand that's particularly concerning. A moving average crossover and the ratio starting to stay below the moving averages like this would equate to increasing concerns or at least paying closer attention. I can't emphasize this enough. If we get a look like this, it doesn't mean a 10% correction is starting. It just tells us that the market's tolerance for risk is starting to deteriorate a little bit. SCHG large cap growth stocks in isolation. This is the correction look that we would like to avoid. 
This is what we look like as of a close on Thursday, March 14th, after both of the above expectation inflation reports. The thin lines that may be difficult to see are anchored volume weighted average price lines. The darker lines, the solid lines, are moving averages. You can see the correction ended here, Q4 of last year, the black moving average. This is what the stronger trend looked like before the correction price above the moving average, and then we start to get a little bit of a trend deterioration look. We really don't have any of that yet. What we have right now is evidence of a strong trend. Defensive one to three year treasuries relative to XLK. This is what we look like on March 14th after the inflation reports. This is the look that we would like to avoid. This is the S&P 500 correction. Very similar concepts, just even more defensive. One to three month T-bills. Very cash-like, very defensive relative to XLK. S&P 500 peaks. Ratio pops its head above the moving average cluster. We're just not there. Tech sector in isolation, XLK. Similar concepts, just flip it upside down. Stronger portion of the trend. XLK is above the moving averages. Early stages of the correction in early August. It just tells us from a shorter term perspective, the trend has weakened a little bit. Doesn't predict how far you're going to fall or how long it's going to last. It just tells us that at this point in time, right here, things are a little bit more dicey than they were up here. XLK in isolation, it's a daily chart. This is the look here during the bear market, a moving average, a moving average. During the bear market, we have a tough time clearing this moving average. Early 2023, January, when we became more bullish, that started to change. Get a moving average crossover here, and the correction from last year looks like this. So for the upper right-hand portion of this chart, it starts to morph into a look more like this, or a look more like this, concerns would increase. That may happen very, very soon. We just don't have it yet. Not making any assumptions about what's going to happen next. Very similar concepts here. Daily chart XLK divided by SHY. Moving averages are the solid lines. Anchored volume weighted average price lines are the dotted lines. Not particularly concerning upper right hand corner of your screen. Remember we showed Thursday's session, one session with weak market breath. The NASDAQ composite itself, price here. This is the early stages of the correction last year. This is early August. This is the eight day out to the 50 day. This is what we look like as of the close on Thursday, March 14th. Everything that we just said about the XLK chart applies to the SPY chart. Present day, upper right hand corner of your screen really doesn't look anything like early August at this point. We'll see how it evolves. Solid lines are moving averages. These are anchored volume weighted average price lines. These very thin dotted lines, I apologize, they're probably difficult to see. The chart was created for the most part. It was an internal use only chart. Correction look here, bear market look here, present day here. A ratio like this can just magnify things a little bit. SMH semiconductor ETF relative to SH, which shorts SPY. The early stages of the correction last summer down here. This is what the ratio looks like in August. The stock market doesn't bottom until October. This is what the same ratio looks like today. In its present form, this looks a lot better than this. And on all of these charts, this is noteworthy. Look how long, two months, we have a strong and confident trend look here. We're double that over here. This is four months. This is a stronger trend on the right in all cases and a more confident trend on the right. And your technicals and sentiment are less vulnerable to a rapid rollover look relative to where we were in July of last year. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. See the white space in between the moving averages up here? That's a strong trend. See the white space in this short little window? Market rallied for another month. And then it started to tighten up a little bit. So if we get a look more like this, then we would be concerned. We'll see how it evolves.
It is relevant, though, that this is stronger than this. We show that XLE is starting to perk up a little bit. This is DBC, a diversified basket of commodities relative to SPY, commodities versus stocks. Here's the bear market here in 2022. This is the fear of inflation look with the faster moving averages, eight day out to the 50 day. This is what we look like on March 14th. This is what we look like during the correction in 2023. If we zoom in, this is the eight day out to the 50. Compare this here with this here. We'll see how it evolves in the coming days and weeks. Very similar concepts. This is shorting the Dow Jones Industrial Average, DOG, in the ETF world relative to XLK. This is the early stages of the correction. This is March 14th. Everything we said about the last chart applies to SH, shorting the S&P 500 relative to XLK. Here's your correction in 2023. If the market is really, really concerned about inflation, then most likely it will believe that the Fed is going to have to raise interest rates even further. And if that were the case, higher interest rates for the most part is good for the U.S. dollar. And you can see during the correction in 2023, the ratio of UUP, the U.S. dollar ETF relative to XLK, takes on a discernibly different look early in the correction. So in early August, the ratio is above the moving average cluster. And that can happen relatively quickly. It just hasn't happened yet. Also noteworthy on all of these charts, this point here, this point here, and this point here, that represents potential resistance. So if the ratio gets up into this area here, we'll learn something based on how it acts near these areas of possible resistance. Now we're doubling back to a topic that we talked about last week and two weeks ago. In theory, if interest rates are going to fall, it will be easier for the rally to broaden out like this, where RSP is outperforming SPY when this ratio is rising. If we have a secular shift in interest rates, meaning the long-term bias is up, it's going to be harder to apply that type of logic, especially from a long-term perspective to the present day market. Weekly chart as of Thursday's close, RSP underperforming SPY by over 1%. Very similar concepts. Regional banks, a lot of commercial real estate loans that have to be rolled over. Higher interest rates makes that harder for everybody. KRE this week, not broadening out, underperforming by 4.58% relative to SPY. Not making any assumptions what happens next on any of these charts. But from a weekly trend perspective, not particularly interested in KRE at this point. You can see here that can change very quickly. Maximum flexibility. We talked about the impact of higher interest rates potentially on small caps rolling over their debt, small caps relative to tech, Monday through Thursday, small caps underperforming by a little bit over 3%. Blue, the fastest moving average, the 30-week is on the bottom. Red, the slowest moving average, the 200-week is on the top. The slopes of all the moving averages are down, and the ratio is below the moving averages. Small caps become a little bit more worthy of consideration if this morphs into something like this, but this ends up being a counter trend rally and buying small caps here ends up hurting you over here. And this underperformance here, we talked about this last week, this is the chart that we showed last week, a lot of hurdles to overcome here to get anything other than a counter trend move. But at some point, a trend has to flip. So when we look at this and we look at this trend as of March 14th, not really seeing anything thus far that alters any of the commentary from the March 1st and March 8th videos, including this concept here on your screen. You can pause your video player relative to rolling over debt. Walking forward, these concepts are important. The magnitude and the speed of the shift in sentiment relative to inflation, interest rates, and Fed policy here early in 2022 is significantly different 
relative to the magnitude of the shift and the speed of the shift. Slope of this line in here is much steeper than the slope here, but it's more the magnitude. Here's a correction look. This is a bear market look. And this concept that we talked about on the semis relative to shorting the S&P 500 chart, it's also relevant that the trends in the present day are quite a bit stronger, meaning market participants are much more confident about the longer term fundamentals over here on the right relative to how they felt here in the summer of 2023 before the 10% correction. That's relevant because that strong trend, stronger trend speaks to A, the probability of getting a double digit drawdown. It's probably lower today. The strength of the trend and the confidence of market participants probably aligns more with a four or 6% drawdown, given what we know today relative to a 10 or 14% drawdown. And we wanna take the strength of the market and the confidence relative to the longer term fundamentals into account if we do get a pullback because we don't want fear of this over here to significantly harm this, the longer term opportunities in a significant manner. That's why thus far, when you see us taking some profits, longer term clients, if you've been here for a while on semiconductors that we're taking a very small portion of the position off the table. And we'll revisit that concept again at the end of the video. There have been some shifts in the market, relatively minor shifts at this point, but potentially relevant following the two hot inflation reports. Thus, it's probably fair to say correction odds have increased marginally in recent days. And let's assume hypothetically a correction is coming and somebody told you that they knew with 100% certainty that the correction was going to be followed by higher highs. And that's what happens with corrections. That's the definition of a correction. The market corrects, and then it goes on to make a higher high. So the strength of the current trend and the probability that the correction is followed by higher highs and higher balances in our accounts logically should impact what we do during a pullback. Somewhere between doing absolutely nothing and holding everything, and on the other end of the spectrum, liquidating the entire portfolio. So we just looked at charts and data sets that can help us with correction odds. Now let's focus on the odds of a higher high following any pullback. S&P 500 weekly, bottom of your screen, full stochastic, top of your screen. You have to be careful saying we're overbought and we have extremely strong momentum and thus a correction is coming based on that alone. Because momentum like this can last a while. This is what the stock market does in that window in 2013, 2014, and into 2015. Now let's shift to monthly momentum and see what we can learn about the probability of the market making a series of higher highs following any intermediate term lows. Same indicator, full stochastic, S&P 500 monthly bottom of the screen. Chart goes back to 1999. See, only three times during this period has monthly momentum gotten down to these depressed levels. Dot-com bust bear market, financial crisis bear market, and the 2022 bear market. Thus, it's logical to ask an answer. After something like this happens, and then the market regains its footing like this or this, which is very, very similar to what's happened between the lows in 2022 in Q4 of 2023, how did the market perform from a longer term perspective? Lower left hand corner of your screen is the answer in the two prior cases, 1231, 2003, April 30th, 2010. One year later, the S&P 500 average gained 12%, two years, 15%, three years, almost 31%, four years, a very impressive 45%. How about the NASDAQ? 100, using the same signal dates, one year later, 15% higher, two years later, almost 25% higher, three years later, 31 and change, four years later, 61% higher on average. Now, having said that, if you know your market history, you know it wasn't necessarily a cakewalk walking forward from 2003 and or 2010. There's a lot of interest rate induced volatility in 2004, 
There's a correction in 2010, and there's a significant drawdown in 2011, telling us to keep realistic expectations about how markets operate in the real world. Having said all of that, this just happened. We came from here to here. When something similar has happened in the past, good things have happened. NASDAQ 100, one year later, both cases higher, two years later higher, three years later higher, four years later higher. Same for the S&P 500, both cases, both cases, both cases, both cases. So something that just happened helps us with this question. The probability of going on to make a higher high after a pullback, which is exactly what happened after the pullback in 2004, after the pullback in 2010, and after the pullback in 2011. This is based on S&P 500 momentum. Very similar concepts if we use NASDAQ market breadth. A lot of weakness in here. A lot of weakness in this region here. A ton of weakness in this region here. Get back to this look here in 2003. Back to this look here in 2009. We just did something similar after being significantly oversold in 2023. Walking forward from this point, you did have corrections. You can see one right here. You did have corrections. You can see one right here and one right here. But the market went on to print a series of higher highs, series of higher highs and higher lows over a number of years in both cases. Once again, telling us to keep an open mind about higher highs following any intermediate term weakness. Not a prediction in any shape, form, or fashion. It's another way to monitor fear. Short-term fear, one-month VIX relative to longer-term fear, three-month VIX. Here's one example. 2008, short-term fear spikes. Bad things are happening in the stock market. Similar occurrences in 2011, 2015, 2018, 2020. In each case, the market had a fairly significant drawdown. And in each case, there was a spike in this ratio. And in each case, the ratio tended to move from the lower left to the upper right relative to the lows, increasing fear. Fear is increasing. Stock market is falling, 2008. Right side of your screen over here, we just don't have a big spike yet. That doesn't mean one's not coming. But this is as of March 14th, after both of the hotter than expected Inflation reports in the form of CPI and PPI. Right now, the look of the ratio probably pairs better with low volatility periods like 2012, 2013, 2014, where the stock market did well, or 2016 and 2017. Again, not a prediction, but that's what we have here. We don't have a spike yet. If we get a spike, we'll learn something. This chart, MYSE Advanced Decline Volume Data, much improved relative to the look we had in July of 2023 and even September 7th of 2023. Why is the improvement relevant potentially? You can see in this window here, there's only three previous cases where the breadth data drops below the 20-month moving average for a significant portion of time. Dot-com bus bear market, financial crisis bear market, kind of a double dip correction. We have a low in 2015 in the S&P 500 and then another low in February of 2016 and the 2022 bear market here. And in each case, once you poked your head back above that 20-month moving average after staying below it for a significant period of time, Good things tended to happen for a long period of time in market breadth for the most part, and the same can be said for the stock market down here on the lower portion of your screen. The longer above, the more relevant it becomes. This look here, this look here, and this look here, and what happened next in the stock market helps us assess the odds of higher highs following any intermediate term weakness with the emphasis on the term odds. MYSE new highs minus new lows. Proving look on September 7th. Had a scare here during the correction last year and a much improved look. And you can really see it if we zoom into that area. A false breakdown here. See, we undercut these levels here. 
You consider this to be a bearish breakdown and then a quick reversal and a break to the upside. This is almost like an outside, a bullish outside day using candlesticks, but it's with market breadth. And this is significant improvement from November of last year to March 14th of this year. Significant improvement here. MISE advanced decline monthly back above the center line. Similar to this look here, 2016. We just said the market bottomed in February of 2016 and rallied for over a year. Bottoms in February, still rising in February of 2017 and peaks, I believe, on January 26th of 2018. So this is almost two years. Similar improving look in here, back above the center line. Helps us assess the odds of higher highs. From a shorter term perspective, here's the correction last year, the 10% correction in the S&P 500. Not shocking that there was a spike in new 52 week lows on the MYSE. This is a weekly chart as of last Friday, March 8th. You can see we didn't have anything like that. We did show earlier in this video that NASDAQ breadth for one session was very weak. Just keep an eye on it. You can see a week ago on the weekly, there's really nothing here in an expansion of new 52 week lows. We did get an expansion during Thursday's session. So we'll see what this weekly chart looks like at the end of the week. You can pause your video player here. This is where the correction starts. You can make an argument, a rational argument, that this look here in early August is somewhat similar to what just happened on March 14th. The orange box is almost phase one of the breakdown. The red box is phase two as the S&P is falling. So we'll see what happens with this data walking forward. This is simply a pay closer attention type break. You can make an argument this is similar to this. Doesn't mean this is going to happen. S&P 500 bullish percent index, it is rare to get this oversold 2022 and then make it back to the upper green line. Happened after the major low, dot-com bus bear market, after the major low in the financial crisis bear market, and after the COVID plunge. In each case, the market went on to make a series of higher highs and higher lows after corrections. Higher highs and higher lows after corrections. Higher highs and higher lows into this peak. More anecdotal in nature, similar situation here, tech sector XLK advanced decline percent. Percent of issues declining relative to the percent of issues in that sector advancing. A lot of weakness here. We're looking at the 10 day moving average of the indicator coincides with that low in February of 2016 that we've talked about a handful of times. Very weak situation here in 2023. In this case, 2016, we made a very rare move back to this high level here in 2016. And after that, good things happened into January 26, 2018. Then we had a 10% correction, and then we went on to print a higher high. This too, is telling us it's possible that any weakness in here would be followed by higher highs. Speaks to odds. Thus, it's possible the odds of a correction are starting to increase. But we also have a lot of data in hand that tells us following that, the odds are good that the market's going to right itself and go on to eventually print a higher high. And that could take several weeks for that to happen or even several months, which is exactly what happened last summer. We corrected in August, September, and into late October. And then after that, it took several weeks to exceed the summer 2023 highs. Quickly on valuations, they typically are a terrible timing tool. PE for the S&P 500 based on actual reported earnings. This is July of last year. We are elevated here, but you can see we're significantly lower relative to the PE up here in 2021 and this level of 28 here still lower than this level in here in the mid 30s in the latter stages of the dot-com bus bear market. Elevated? Absolutely positively yes. Relevant? Absolutely positively yes. It also speaks to increasing odds of sideways consolidation and or a pullback. 
But again, you got to be very, very careful with using valuations as a timing tool. Buffett indicator here, 1960 to 1970. Valuations hovering right at strongly overvalued. Almost the entire time in this window here from approximately 1962 into the late 1960s. Was this a horrible time to be invested? It was not. From this point here, this annual low here, point A to point B, when the market was strongly overvalued in this window, it gained 88%. The data on your screen as of the close on Thursday, March 14th. Between last Thursday and this Thursday's close, the S&P has gained 27 points. So it's not surprising that the secular volatility model scores are basically identical. There's no reason for them to be dropping here. The market is still strong or higher than we were a week ago. This data, all of this data in here helps us balance the desire to stay with the long-term trend holding and allowing our positions to go on and make a higher high after any pullback or correction and our balances to go on to make higher highs with the desire to avoid large drawdowns and most importantly very large drawdowns order of magnitude 30 percent 40 percent or 50 percent right now all of that long-term momentum data the strength of the trends Trend strength model, both scores last Friday, 100, 100. Can't imagine they're any lower today with the S&P 27 points higher. We'll update those over the weekend. Pullbacks 100% normal to be expected given what we know today. If you're seeing the minimal money we're taking off the table in terms of the percent of our position in what is a highly profitable SMH semiconductor position, that's because the odds still say even after a significant correction in SMH, it will probably go on to print a higher high. All of this is subject to change. Everything that we've covered in this week's video can help us assess those odds. Correction odds, higher high odds. Continue to make progress on this front. Getting ready to start 1967. Just took a very hard and detailed look at a significant drawdown within the context of a secular trend in 1966. Listen only to what the market is telling you now. It's exactly what we've done in this week's video. You wake up tomorrow and you do the same thing again. Nothing in hand that discounts any of this. So at the moment, we want to take a very measured approach relative to this. A very big thank you to everyone that helped out on this front. We really appreciate it. And thus far, we're on schedule relative to these topics down here. This portion of the video is being recorded on Friday afternoon, March 15th at approximately 3 p.m. Eastern time. We've reviewed all of the charts covered in this week's video during Friday's session. We've updated the trend strength model, the market model, and the secular volatility model. And based on the weight of the evidence, the concept on the screen should guide our actions until something changes in a material manner. It would be great if the stock market and our positions could go up every single day. We all know that doesn't pass the common sense test. All trends have counter trend moves, including leadership trends. Semiconductors, large cap growth, and large cap tech cannot lead every single day of the year. Again, given what we know today, we're concerned about what our positions might be worth in two to three years, rather than two to three weeks or two to three months. As always, we'll make no assumptions going forward, and we all know the only way that we can use all of this effectively is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice. And Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, 
is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.